Hello and welcome to Ashoka Live. And we're having very amazing conversations every time, but today is particularly very amazing for me. I'm Tokwe Fajimbesi, I'm the CFO of Ashoka. And today I have Nelson Olanik Pekun, the brain behind Citizens Gavel in Nigeria. Citizens Gavel is really playing a pivotal role, changing the landscape in terms of getting justice, leveraging technology, the power of youth, and the power of AI to really get justice for the oppressed and the underrepresented. Today, I'm going to have a chat with Nelson Olanik Pekun to tell us, you know, a lot about the work that they are doing. Nelson, welcome. Hi, thank you, Zope, and it's nice to be here. Fantastic, Nelson. So I asked you how you started this journey. How did you go from being a banker, a lawyer in the bank to, you know, representing the underrepresented? Yeah, uh, th th thank you so much, Zope. Um, Essentially, in Nigeria, we've, 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 we've got no 911. Uh, we all rely on social capital. And, and it's often said here that it takes a village to raise a child. Uh, whereas um, we've extended that, um, that parable a little bit further. To, it takes a village to cater to everybody. And, 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 and in, in that village, we mean community. So for you in Nigeria, community is a lot to us. Community provides you with the emergency support that you need. When, whereas it, what everybody might be, might be uh, accustomed to is you call the, the, the firefighter, you call the 911. But it's the, your own community that rises up when your house is on fire here in, in Nigeria. So. Having given that context, we created a system that can cater to that community, and which is what we do here in Gabo, by providing everybody a shot at justice. And, and that just that didn't just start. It started by motivation, really, was related to the story of my parents when we were younger. And um, it took a pro bono, a legal head lawyer, to help us have a shot at justice. And that helped my parents to retain their home from being um, sold by, by the bank. And fast forward, I became a lawyer a couple of years later, and I, I, was, I was representing banks. But there was a case I, I handled that changed my life forever. It was a case of a pensioner, um, someone who has retired, and she had to, you know, she had kept some money in the bank, hoping that when she retired, she would get interest and all that. But the bank didn't want to release the funds. They wanted to keep using the funds. So we were represented the bank. And the instruction I got from my principal was find a way to delay this process, you know, mm -hmm. and so that she, she, at least the bank, can keep using the money. And we're working for the bank. But, but that was that was a really big conflict for me because I felt that we should ordinarily be protecting the vulnerable, but now we're using the law to you know frustrate them. So after that, I resigned and, and then I started Citizen Gabo. And Gabo since then has been able to you know, provide access to justice to over 5,000 people. Um, we've handled over um, 5,000 legal interventions to people across sexual and gender-based violence and across different issues. And, and, and it's important to note that one in every eight persons here in Nigeria face legal problems. So you can see a country of 200 million people, you can see that that is a lot of issues. That's 25 billion legal problems to be handled. And we are here meeting needs of, of, of these people. Oh my goodness. So before I even, I, I want to follow up on that point because I wanted to ask you about technology and I'm going to ask you in a second, but 25 million legal problems puts it in perspective for me. And we're talking about a system that has the incentive to be inefficient. You could be going through a court case in Nigeria and that court case could be adjourned. You could be there on the line trying to get justice for years. But how are you dealing with that system that wants to be inefficient on purpose? Yeah, yeah. So um, Nigeria is a very complex and a very challenging place place to work with. But uh, um, 
and, and if I don't acknowledge the privilege we've gotten over years, and, and it's because we've made impact, and because we've made that impact, we've been able to build a, a kind of influence um, over the system. And, um, you know, we could, we could, for example, you, you, you are arrested illegally. We could, um, because of what we've done, we could call the headquarters of the police and spotlight that case to them, that this person has been arrested unjustly and we, we need this person released. Our lawyers are already at the police station. These are all the things they need to get the persons out. We need the persons released within the um, time frames stipulated by the law. Some other people would not have that privilege because, um, but we were able to enter. But something that we do differently, and that's, this will be touching on the technology question you, you wanted to ask. And, and, and something that we do differently in, in, in Gavel is because we also use technology um, mm. to scale up and to reach a lot of people. Um, traditional NGOs here are constrained by brick and mortar, of mm. course. That comes with its challenge because it, it limits the number of people you can reach per time and how much you can still scale. But with Gavo, we've been able to come up with different homegrown technology that's really helped us to, to, to scale. One of that I will call Uber for Justice, our produce <laughs> platform. So you know the way Uber connects yes. drivers to riders? So yes. our platform connects victims of injustice to lawyers in their location. And, wow. and, and, and that helps to, yeah, that really helps to help provide justice, homegrown justice um, for people. Nigeria is a very big country, like I earlier said, 200 million people, 36 yes. states plus the federal capital, making it 37 states. And, and for that contest, a lawyer in a state it makes it difficult for you to quickly rush to another state to give. So, but with the way we design our, our, our process, we are able to respond to injustice in different states per time. And we've presently got 260 volunteer lawyers across 26 states in, in Nigeria. And we've got a rapid response team. And the, the concept of the rapid response team, like I said earlier, in Nigeria, we are our own 911. You would call yes. 911 and we got a rapid response team to come to your head. But in Nigeria, we, we provide a rapid response legal team for when you when you get arrested and you're being about to be locked up, we respond quickly to, 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 to that. When you're facing a sexual and gender-based violence, we respond quickly to that. And different other emergency issues that people can connect to us and respond to. The other thing I would like to spotlight in the category of technology is how we also using AI for, 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 for justice. And, and, and sometimes ago I tweeted how, how our AI could help you with the rising economy in Nigeria at the, pro, at the moment, how it could help you if your land, your Lagos land, Lagos is, is one of the biggest cities in, in Nigeria. It's the it's the New York Nigeria. is the New York of Nigeria. Yeah. Yeah, it's the New York of, of Nigeria. And how can you how can you use this AI to write to your landlord that is illegal for him to raise your rent beyond a particular threshold. And the AI actually drafted the letter <laughs> to um you know, to, to 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 a landlord and how you could use it, how you could, you know, it cites the tenancy law of Lagos State, citing all this. Thing. And because we've trained it with all these laws and, 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 and training it with judicial precedent, that it could leverage to respond to all these unique needs of people. You no know, parking tickets. You no, know, how can you appeal a parking ticket? I, I know that is a common trend in the US and in the in, in Europe. You know, park for a few minutes and, and you've been given a ticket. So how can yes. you use this AI to draft a parking ticket appeal? You know, those are the use cases that this AI have been have been trained to do. We've not presently put it out there for the consumption of public because by the time we put it out there, we are we are afraid of the server cost. But we've been testing it around, getting feedbacks and be, be using it. 
and um, hopefully by January, the public can, can largely use it. Hopefully by then, we, we won't be afraid of, of, of server cost. Hopefully something happens. But because, so those are some of the potential ways that we've been, we've been using AI. Another area we're using AI is um, we develop a tool called Justice Clock. And Justice Clock is a case management software that will work with the um, Department of Public Prosecution. So that's the department responsible for, to, pro, to prosecute criminal charges across Nigeria. So we've deployed it in two states, Justice Clock in Ogun and in Lagos State. And um, what we are now doing with that is also now leveraging AI on how can it help you to draft charge, charges. The lawyers working, the prosecutors working in this in this um, department of public prosecution, how can they quickly help them to the, the, reduce the turnaround time? Because mm. the time people spend behind bars in Nigeria is a long time. Over 70% of people in, incarcerated in Nigeria are always in trial. So yes. if you are able to handle, it, it, reduce the turnaround time with AI, it helps to improve the pace at which people assess um, justice. So the justice clock already is a case management system, but we're upgrading it to make it faster, to make it more easier for this prosecutor to shun out, charge uh, an information paper for people to be charged with God, and that, would, that is a shorter time frame. And let me point out that in the criminal justice system in Nigeria, you are just a case file. You are represented by a case file. Once that case file gets missing, you get missing in the system. I've seen people get lost in the system for several years because the case file has been missing. It's not seen. But with this technology that we're deploying into the system, it protects it because you are better protected. When, 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 when someone forgets about the case, there is a reminder that, mm. that so, so you, you can't be forgotten in, in the system. Whereas the system is created one way or other to forget about it's you. you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I, those are some of the ways, yeah, yes. that our technology has been impacting lives. I, I think that's just really amazing because when you think about currently in the global stage, when you think about the impact of technology uh, on Africa, one of the areas that really pains my heart is the um, the need for cobalt in Congo and where there's child labor and all of this um, injustices against people. I imagine if they have gavel in Congo, you know, a lot of these cases can be escalated. So I'm hoping that your, your um, organization can really expand even beyond Nigeria. But even in Nigeria, there is a huge need. You know, you, you referenced 25 million cases because one in eight people really would need legal help. But, and with this technology, you're definitely going to be ruffling some, you know, feathers. I, I'm interested to know your relationship with the Nigerian police and some of the unlikely allies that you're actually getting while you're doing this work. And what we do is to identify champions within the criminal justice system that can be change makers of um, using this technology. I will recall some time ago that the Attorney General of um, Ogun State, we, we would practically, we practically design the justice clock together because um, of the user interface, everything that went into the justice clock. And, and it's by identifying people like this that we are able to change the system, we are able to drive um, adoption um, within the system. So whenever we're trying to scale or reach out to other states, we identify champions, change makers in the system and that can help us to push out and, and, and the adoption in this technology. Over time, regarding the, 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 the um, police interaction, we were part of the um, NSAS that happened in Nigeria, which is uh, a variation of the uh, Black Lives Matter. NSAS was a huge um, movement in Nigeria and it still, um, still is. And essentially, it's in response to police brutality um, issues. And, and, and the, the movements, we provided a very huge number of support. We responded to over 400 um, legal cases during the NSAS in Nigeria. People incarcerated um, um, 
across different states in, in Nigeria, and we had to respond. And like I said earlier, we were like the 911, you know, responding to those issues. When people are incarcerated, we go there as lawyers and, and, and get them out on, on bail, sometimes till 12 midnight, because some of these issues, people, people, um, people, the, 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 the state find a way to make it inefficient and people just, they want people to sleep behind bars for, for to teach them lessons. So, and, 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 and we were, we were, we were there supported. Um, essentially, we've also been at the policy side of things. During the, um, the drafting of the police act in Nigeria, we've been part of the process, trying to introduce um, innovations into the police act that could help reduce the level of um, police brutality. So there's a policy aspect of our work beyond the technology, because we believe that there is an intersection of this um, um, of this um, work programs. There is an intersection that we really need to drive our objective of our faster justice delivery um, process. Hmm. Thank you so much. And you know, I want to give some context to what you said about the the help that you got from the Attorney General of Ogun State. Uh, for those who are listening from the U.S., Ogun State is what Maryland is to Washington D.C or Northern Virginia is to Washington, D.C. It's very populated, but a lot of the population is um, going to Lagos, you know, to work, to live, to make a living. So if you can impact people, if you can bring justice, and if you can get allies from the government in, you know, that state, you're actually going to impact even a lot more people. Thank you so much. You know, there's, um, I want to talk about NSAS a little bit, because NSAS, you rightly said, it was the Black Lives Matter movement, and it is the Black Lives Matter movement in Nigeria, even though we are all Black, but there's still police brutality. You know, how do you then use that opportunity to help citizens know what their rights are? Because if you don't know what your rights are, how do you even know somebody's infringing on them? That's awesome. So um, before I delve into that question, I would like to spotlight one major achievement that we that we got um, during the NSAS. We were able to get the Chief Justice of Nigeria, who is the head of the Supreme Court, to issue a directive to all magistrates. So magistrates manage the lower courts, and they are in almost every local government in in Nigeria. So we we're able to get the Chief. Chief Justice of Nigeria to direct all magistrates to visit police stations across the country. And up till now, they still do, to release people that have been arrested um, arbitrarily and illegally. So nowadays, magistrates can visit police stations and ensure that people's rights are not violated in those police stations. If people are spending more than the 24 48 hour, hours provided by the law, they can release them. Those are some of the ways to, through which we checkmate um, the, the process, the, the arbitrariness of police uh, brutality uh, here in Nigeria. And um, also, specifically during answers, what we were able to do, um, of course, beyond the policy and, 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 and the intervention, was to also galvanize support across different stakeholders in the country. Uh, we, I recall we, we secured over 50 million Naira in compensation to victims of NSAS. We also got one of the persons we represented flown to India for spinal cord uh, injury um, during, during NSAS. 50 million was, um, as of then was over, I think, 100 or 150,000 um, dollars. And this is to compensate for different varying uh, injuries that uh, the over 10 people that were represented during that um, panel section. So those are some of the unique ways that we're able to, beside the people that we, we, we've, we've released in detention. Fantastic. And I wanted you to talk, talk briefly about what you're doing to make sure I know my rights. Oh, okay, awesome. So yeah, so we, we've, we've created, um, very fun, cool videos, you know, to to educate people about the rights. So our system change approach is to educate people. From educating people, we empower them with the right knowledge and skill sets to um, 
to improve and to fight for their rights. And from that, we move to the stage whereby if people feel violated, they can reach out to, to us through our Uber for Justice approach for those lawyers to, to fight for them. And also, if they find themselves inside the criminal justice system, our justice clock and all those other tools can also help them. But let me delve back into the um, education, um, legal education we, we do. So we create fun ways through which people get interested in, in law. So telling them stories and scenarios, we apply laws to them. So in form of comedy and all that, because we know that law could be boring and very traditional. So uh, to get people interested in knowing their rights, we tell stories, we create fun ways that could you know, really um, fascinate them about learning about all this thing. And it, it has been growing. So in just one minute, we tell that story, we tell them the applicable law and how they can fight for, the, for their right. So it and, and gradually we'll be growing that, 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 that method. By the I, way, I started it. from... Yeah. yeah, by the way, it started from just using infographics to, to use this, just using it with graphics, just telling the stories with graphics. But it's static and all that. But with the with introduction of video, it became really a lot. People can put it on their WhatsApp status. And yes. in just one minute, people get to know about the law. You put it on Twitter, you put it on Facebook and Instagram. And in just one minute, you get one sense about it. And you can really apply it in your day-to-day -day life. I, I Honestly, I learned more in your video about defamation of character than I learned in my law class when I was in university. <laughs> so I, I, I thought that was really, really brilliant. And I'm going to open up for questions and answers, and hopefully we can take as much as we can. But I want to tell you that what you're doing is really important, and I hope that you bring it to America. Because in Nigeria, there's inefficiency in the, in the system. There's motivation to keep people in jail. But in America, there's also something to keep Black people in jail, and it's called profitability and capitalism. So please bring gavel to America as well. So uh, let me go to uh, Lisa. Lisa's uh, question is, are you also working with the university law school clinics? Your innovation will teach these students via the, their clinics. Yeah, thank you so much. So we work with university. There is this university that we work with in um, Ife, University of Ife, or Bafemi Awolo University, so one of the um, biggest university in the southwestern part of Nigeria. And we, we we work with the law student there to educate them and also provide them with legal support because the law student cannot represent in court. So we follow them to prison. They interview the, the inmates, they document. It's, it's a practical section for, that, for them. But when it, it means going to court, we have to go to court um, um, to represent those clients, and they can always as well come to 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 follow to work with us. But beyond that, also there are other institutions that we we work with. There's a network of um, university law students that we've got a partnership um, with as well. Um, when they've got watch workshops, we are invited to those workshops to speak and all that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And this next question is from Osai, who I know was the head of Amnesty International in Nigeria for a while. She says, excellent work that Gavel is doing to offer a course to people on the fringes of society. I'd like to know how Gavel has been able to keep their staff motivated and supported as they carry out this crucial work. How have you managed secondary trauma? This is so important. Yeah, th thank you so much for that question. Uh, it, it's a challenging phase. Um, and, and, and I think one of the best ways to keep staff motivated is, is through regular payments of salary and resources. And that, that is really a big thing in Nigeria, given the, the economic um, situation in, in Nigeria. But beyond that, we also provide stipend for our volunteer lawyers. So our volunteer lawyers, the 260, whenever they provide legal support, we provide stipend to, to support them. Then as well, we also provide them with um, recommendations whenever they need them for universities, when they are going for their master's degree at LLM, and when they need scholarships. So some of the, the, the volunteer lawyers reach out to them. And because we are a recognized brand, we provide them with those um, 
um, recommendations and, and, and all. The other ways that we also um, do is a lot of government staff and people that we keep in our volunteer pool are young people. And um, the, the, we, we find a way to utilize that energy by creating um, exciting ways to, to reach the internet. So sometimes we, we do a lot of retreats and we do a lot of fun just, just to keep people um, motivated and get the drive going um, in the organization. But of course, it's, it's been big on resources. Without resources, we've not have been able to, 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 to do all this. Yes. And I think, you know, that opportunity for them to also do non-work things through the retreats would also help with that trauma that they're experiencing. Yeah. Fantastic. So, um, Iverin asks this question, says, will, will we soon have an AI application that will notify parents when police randomly raid an area and abduct young people without giving them access to phone calls, leaving parents unaware of the whereabouts of their kids? Excellent question. That, that that's that's really awesome. I I I think um, that is a very great strategy to, to go about it because there is there is this common practice of raid in in Nigeria. We also provide that legal support. Our lawyers respond to those um, to, to those situations. Then the magistrates as well. Whenever there are bail is um, incident and um, that whenever there are, there are raid incidents we um notify magistrates that is responsible for that that they, they could checkmate the the arrest the arbitrariness of the arrest in those police stations so they could release people i remember doing answers we had to there was someone that was arrested from ekiti uh, ekiti and brought to abuja and we had to notify the magistrates in Abuja to visit the uh, criminal headquarters, uh, first criminal headquarters in Abuja to ensure that that person was released. So those are some of the um, ways that we use in, in checkmating that. But with AI and automation, that, that is really a brilliant way to go about it. And with open source intelligence, um, it's, it's also a very fantastic, fantastic way to go about it. Fantastic. So we have two minutes left and I want to just say to everyone listening that if we cannot take your question, we'll make sure that Nelson answers them on Twitter. So make sure that, you know, you go on the Citizens Gavel Twitter um, handle and uh, get response to your questions. Final question I'll take. Uh, where do you personally go for new ideas and inspiration? And can you share any AI applications or anything else catching your attention around the world that you're particularly excited about these days? Yeah, thank you for ideas. The, the funny thing is, uh, I I do a lot of movies, and movies has been a source of good inspiration to me. And and also one one thing I noticed is that whenever I whenever I I'm in the shower, <laughs> in the shower, well, probably or when I'm praying, some of these ideas are source of inspiration. But I also love nature. I I know I I do a lot of uh, walk in the park for you to just have because if if I if I'm consciously thinking about this idea they don't they don't tend to come but sometimes mm -hmm. you get it relaxed you need to have it be in a relaxed uh, mood to, to get them and um uh, in terms of uh, I've forgotten the other question but about um, AI what um what 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 is motivating you inspiring you especially yeah, in yeah. Yeah, so in, in terms of AI, the areas I'm looking at, um, of course, the, the Google, Google just launched Gemini and other, um, the other LLMs that are out there. Um, we are also looking at in uh, So I think we may have lost um, um, internet. In okay, good. Community. Okay, all right. I think we lost Hello. you for a minute. We lost you for a minute, but we um uh, we have you back. And I want to just say that um, Nelson will answer the questions that we weren't able to get to. He would answer them on Twitter. I want to thank everyone who listened to us today. Um, you all have been fantastic. Your questions have been great, and the questions will be answered on Twitter. The ones we could not get to. So make sure you follow Citizens Gavel 
on their Twitter handle. And of course, follow Ashoka. Thank you so much, Nelson, for your uh, time today. And thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.